Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sa mapagpala, makasaysayan na araw po sa lahat ng mga narito sa August Body ng House of Representatives. Para sa kaalaman po ng lahat, ang privilege speech na ito yung nakischedule originally January 22, subalit dahil sa sudden eruption ng Taal Volcano, the leadership of the House of Representatives headed by our uh, beloved uh, Speaker of the House, uh, uh, Speaker uh, Alan Peter Caetano, the Majority Leader Martin Romaldes, and Minority Leader uh, Benny Abante decided to transfer the said session to Batangas uh, Convention Center. Hence, uh, this privilege speech was a little bit uh, uh, delayed for a while. But this is to emphasize the uh, Bible month in our country. Kaya po ang aking, uh, ang aking pong, uh, title ng privilege speech na ito ay uh, the so-called uh, the indispensability of the Holy Bible in state crafting or in nation building. Sa simula po, plano ko sanang huwag ko nang basahin ang aking uh, prepared privilege speech because of uh, some uh, sentiments on time of some of the uh, our friends here. Bala ko po, in five minutes, I can just present to you the answers to what is the Bible, why the Bible is important in crafting the nation uh, future, the nation's future, and how. Nabalitaan ko po na marami pa lang mga dumating na mga multi-sectoral groups sa different society ng ating bansa, mula po sa mga bleachers, different uh, cities and provinces ay nandito po sa ating kalagitnaan maging ang ilang foreign missionary sa panguna ng President of Promise Christian University si Dr. Uh, Mike McKinney Dr. Uh, Adele McKinney kasama po ang National President ng Philippines for Jesus Movement Bishop Leo Alconga at ganoon din po kasama ang President ng Philippine Council of Evangelical Churches Si Dr. Noel Pantoja, maging ang El Shaddai leading preacher ng USA, si Attorney Ramoncito Campo, inarito po, ang katang kanyang may bahay. Dahil po sa binisita tayo ng multisectoral groups, it could be injustice to them if I will just abbreviate my message. So therefore, I do hope You can understand why I have to read this uh, prepared privilege speech. To my fellow uh, atheists before, I used to be an atheist for seven years of my life, and if there is still some atheists here, I am just uh, requesting your uh, consideration. Uh, let us remember the philosophy of Voltaire. He said, and I quote him, an atheist in history, Bolter said, I may disagree with what you are saying, but I will defend your right to say it till my death. Unquote. So I do hope that I can read my privileged speech with freedom and liberty. To, to my distinguished colleagues in the House of Representatives, guests and visitors gathered here today, and fellow Filipinos watching this video stream, good afternoon. I stand in front of this August body on a matter of personal and collective privilege to speak about a very important matter that I deem highly instrumental in fulfilling our solemn mandate to the Filipino people. Fine. Initially, I requested to deliver this speech on earlier date, as I have said a while ago, but because of extremely urgent matters we have to address in the recent session days, I chose to get the next available and suitable schedule. Conveniently, such a schedule falls today, the first Monday of February, the month when Filipinos and the whole world celebrate the spirit of love, because I am here to talk about the book of love that was written through and by God's own love for us, the Holy Bible. 
Last week, we celebrated the National Bible Day, as we ought to do every last Monday of January, in the parents to Republic Act number 11163, principally authored by Senator Manny Pacquiao and Senator Joel Villanueva. This act, the state recognizes its policy of aiding and encouraging the development of moral character and spiritual foundation of the Filipino people who constitute the largest Christian nation in Asia Pacific. We saw the different ways on how Filipinos commemor commemorated this significant event. In the very halls of House of Representatives, for instance, at the South Wing lobby just last week, we had an educational exhibit organized by the Philippine Bible Society and the United Bible Societies in coordination with Christians in Congress Fellowship that ran from January 27 to January 30. Still for others, there were prayer walks, mass gatherings, symposium, competitions, and the like. However, as a loyal follower of the living God, as your deputy speaker for good governance and moral uprightness, per uh, designation revealed to me by our speaker. I feel with deep conviction that I am duty-bound, born to God and to you, both to God and to you, my beloved, my dear colleagues, to make sure that this celebration will not just simply pass as that, a celebration mandated by a Republic Act. For even though the National Bible Day is but only a day in the Philippines' list of national holidays, the truth it conveys must be trumpeted in all corners of this society every single day that the living God has revealed to the world that the truths necessary to guide us as we endeavor to live our earthly existence and these truths are contained in God's book, the Holy Bible. I remember suddenly the word of Abraham Lincoln considered as the greatest president of the United States of America he said, per history, that the greatest gift of God to humanity is the Holy Bible. I remember suddenly also the words of George Washington, the first president of the United States of America. He said, and I quote him, It is impossible to govern a nation without God, without His word and prayer, unquote. Hence, I want to share to you Briefly, what is this Bible that sometimes becomes controversial? According to history, various forces since time immemorial tried to destroy the Bible. But until now, the Holy Bible remains to be the number one bestseller in all parts of the world. This is just a reminder to all of us. Now, what is this Bible? If it is not just a book at the center of a religion, that is Christianity, what really is it? To put it plain and simple, the Bible is the Word of God. It testifies of itself through St. Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, verse 17. And I quote, All Scripture is God's breath and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting. I am repeating correcting because I believe the House of Representatives of the Republic of the Philippines is, uh, uh, is bound by its duty to correct whatever wrongs that are happening, if there is any, in our society. Correcting and training in righteousness. Righteousness here is mentioned. I remember Proverbs 14.34, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a, re is a disgrace to any people. Now, the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work, which is the ultimate aim, one of the ultimate aims of the Bible. In detail, it is a divine compilation of 66 different books written in three languages, Hebrew, Greek, Aramaic, written by 40 very different authors in three major continents, Asia, Africa, and Europe, in a span of over 1,600 years. Beloved colleagues, just to remind us of this truth, 40 writers in the span of 1,600 years wrote the Bible as inspired, mandated 
by the Holy Spirit of God. And you cannot find any major real contradiction. But we can see in, in history, you read five biography books of one person written by four authors, just four authors, and you can see several contradictions proving that the Bible is entirely different from ordinary book. Yet, there could be, there could exist some, <coughs> excuse me, some uh, differences in words like large or big or huge, but the meaning is the same. And uh, I would like also to remind everybody that St. Peter emphasized this truth when he said in 2 Peter 1, verse 20 to verse 22. <coughs> Excuse me. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. For prophecy never had its origin in the human will, but prophets. The human spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. The Bible thus is the book of books because it is the book of God as revealed in the Holy Bible. Some people are saying, like me, when I was still an atheist, well, I don't believe the Bible. What is the, the convincing proof that the Bible could be the book of the living God? If you study carefully without biases and prejudices, 332 prophecies in the Old Testament Concerning the life, the birth, the life, and death of Jesus Christ, they were all accurately fulfilled in the New Testaments. And some major prophecies are now being fulfilled every day as signs of the second coming of the Lord. So that's just a reminder to all of us. Because I used to use that uh, argument when I was still an atheist during my radical days. Now, why use the Bible? Why will we, complex human beings with wide access to all the available knowledge in the world, follow a book? Why will we let it regulate our lives or even our nation? It is because using it means acknowledging and submitting to the authority of God in every pillar of our society. Because doing so will open up our country to all the good things God has in store for, for those who put him above all else. As it is written in Psalm 33 verse 12, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. If U.S. dollar has in God we trust, we can say to the whole world that the Philippine peso has enshrined a few years ago, Psalm 33 verse 12, Blessed is the nation whose God is is the Lord. The, the, uh, the national anthem of Canada clearly enshrined the word of God. So let's show to the world that Philippines is really a God-believing nation. Clearly God's blessings and guidance are what our country needs, especially today. When New Year has barely started, yet trials after trials, have already hounded us. Indeed, while we were still reeling from the effects of local and international conflicts, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, calamities, disasters, and the two cases of novel coronavirus in the country were confirmed just a few days ago. If we are serious in reading the holy book of the living God, we can see that all nations of the world are beset with different crises, calamities, disasters, plagues, famine, all because of the so-called curses of sins. Even Israel suffered many times from all these uh, 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 tragedies, curses of sickness, curses of sins. But I would like to remind everybody, my beloved colleagues, that God has provided one simple but significant solution. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, God said, and I quote, 
If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will heal. I will heal from heaven. I will forgive your sins and I will heal your land. Sa Tagalog po, kung ang bayan o mga taong tinawag sa aking pangalan ay magpapakumbaba, mananalangin, hahanapin ng aking mukha at tataligod sa kanilang mga kasalanan. Ako na Diyos na may gawa ng langit at lupa ay makikinig sa inyong mga daing at pananalangin. Patatawarin ko ang inyong mga kasalanan at pagagalingin ko ang inyong bayan. Ang coronavirus po ay hindi gawang biro. Never in history na halos lahat ng Pilipino ngayon nagagawan sa mask, sa maskara. Kaya nga ho, ang supply, yung 500, yun hong 200 per, per box ng mask. Ngayon ho, 1,500 per box of mask. Wala pang mabili. I do hope that God's mercy will prevail eventually and stop these plagues and famine going on around in our country. At gusto ko rin pong ipaalala yung sinabi po doon sa Psalm 119 verse 105 for all respected lawmakers in our country in the lower house as well as in the upper house. Sabi po ng Diyos sa Psalm 111 verse 105 The word of God is the light unto our path and lamp and lamp unto our feet. Ito pong sabi. At sinabi doon sa uh, Psalm 119 verse 11, I keep your word, Lord, in my heart so that sin cannot come in. Ito po ay paalala po sa sambay ng Pilipino. Kung gusto natin ang ating bansa ay may bukas na langit, iwasan po natin ang S-I-N sin because of sin curses are coming but when there is repentance and humility and courage to submit ourselves to God's authority and sovereignty then the healing power of God will prevail ito po ang napakahalaga na nakalagay sa banal na kasulatan pwede po bang sa puntong ito Bigay natin ang karangalan sa Diyos. Isang malakas na palakpak sa Diyos na buhay. Just to give applause to the Lord. Applause is not only for politicians or celebrities, but also for the Almighty God. Amen? While we do our best to curb the debilitating effects of these challenges to our people, I urge you, beloved, to put in mind that we are not alone in this fight. In dark times as this, we have God and His Word to light our path. On one hand, let us utilize science, devise strategies, and implement ways to address the matter at hand. Yet on the other, let us pray to God. Cling to His promises. Obey His word. From then till now, we must be the same people, the sovereign people of this land imploring the aid of the Almighty God as enshrined in the very preamble of the Constitution. I suddenly remember to read for the sake of our uh, 110 million Filipinos right now in population. The Philippine Constitution enshrined in its preamble, this glorious preamble, and let me read as a reminder to, to the world that the Filipino people are not barbaric but actually civilized and Christians. And I quote the preamble of the Philippine Constitution. We, the sovereign Filipino people, imploring the aid of Almighty God, the author of the Bible, In order to build a just and humane society and establish a government that shall embody our ideals and aspirations, promote the common good, conserve and develop our patrimony, and secure to ourselves and our posterity the blessings of independence and democracy under the rule of law and a regime of truth, justice, freedom, love, equality, and peace do ordain and promulgate this Constitution. Maliwanag pa sa sikat ng araw ang sambayin ng Pilipino, the sovereign Filipino people believe in the living God. Kaya there is no room to oppose the beliefs of the majority of our people on God. Nabasa ko pong isang aklat ang title, Why Nations Fail. Ang isang lesson po na nakita ko ron, Because of the failure of political power in establishing the right institutions that can understand and promote and advance 
the greatest welfare and interest of the people could be the cause why grinding poverty, miseries, injustices, and righteousness are prevailing. Hence, more than ever before, the importance of reviewing the Holy Book of the Bible, or the Bible. As Deputy Speaker for Good Governance and Moral Uprightness, I have burdened myself to be blatantly exposed to the, the sad realities besetting our nation today. I bring these hard facts to this body not to create controversies, but I feel it is the duty of the lawmaking body of every nation to hear this, especially the entire Filipino community that may hasten action in order to save our society from first degradation. First is the increasing rate of teenage pregnancy in our country. My beloved fellow lawmakers, this is the statistics. The unbelievable sudden increase of teenage pregnancy in our country, 13 years old, 14 years old, 15 years old, young uh, girls in our country becoming pregnant according to Commission on Population and Development, PACCOM. An average of 530 teenagers get pregnant daily. That is roughly 24 babies every hour of 200,000 babies each year. While primarily affecting the young parents' future, this scenario is also detrimental to the economy because according to National Economic Development Authority or NEDA, young mothers lose about 24 billion to 47 billion pesos in earnings annually due to early pregnancy, per report of NEDA. That's why you can see, beloved, the increase in rape cases, incest, incest cases in our country today. Sometimes I am tempted to ask, is MTRCB still relevant or is MTRCB needs more teeth to implement the, the laws based on righteousness and morality. You and I are witnesses. Many television programs today, instead of learning great lessons in rebuilding our country, is advancing the spirit of, of uh, lasciviousness and immorality. Indeed, we all labor to address this alarming situation in all ways we can. But this would not happen in the first place if what the Bible teaches about sexual purity had been inculcated among our youth. Call me conservative if you must. But I know what the Bible says. It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 and verse 4. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, God said, Be holy, pursue peace, and be holy, for without holiness no one can see God. Another pressing matter we must address in this country is, perennial problem of cor is the perennial problem of corruption. We recently received the unfortunate news that the Philippines has dropped 14 places below its, its 2018 Global Corruption Index. In addition to this is the estimation of Deputy Ombudsman Cyril Ramos, which surmised that the government had lost a staggering 1.4 trillion pesos to corruption in the past two years alone. I believe rational people should be shocked about this shocking corruption going on. I remember a scholar from Scotland who has been specializing in the economy of Asian region. He said, I have never seen a country in this world like the Philippines that used to be number one in Asia, even richer than Japan until 1943. But 50 years after, in so short a time, the Philippines had fallen down to the bottom, blacklisted as Sigmund of Asia, 
laughing stock of Asia, the most corrupt country in Asia, exporter of slaves, because the Philippines had undergone incredible deterioration due to shocking and abated political corruption. I'm just sharing this because I believe in my heart there is still much hope for our country, especially if the lawmaking bodies in this country will be serious in crafting serious laws that can curb the evils of corruption. While uh, another, another, sorry, truthfully, until now, we see irregular government transactions and shady contracts. I would really like to have a deeper conversation regarding these purported, purported deals, but I will have to reserve this matter for another day. As our team is still gathering pieces of evidence to present to this judicious body. But let me steer your memory a bit regarding a statement that became notoriously known when a dubious project between the Philippine government and China was exposed not many years ago. A former, a former cabinet member said and popularized this word, and I quote him, moderate your greed, unquote. Moderate your greed, unquote said one government official to another. I suddenly remember Colossians chapter 3, verse 5 and verse 6. Greed or covetousness is idolatry, and people exercising such will surely invite the wrath of God." Unquote. This is against the law. The Holy Bible does not only say moderate your greed. It explicitly tells us in Colossians 3, verse 5 and verse 6, as I have told you already, my beloved, that greed or covetousness is idolatry and therefore abomination to the Lord. What is unfortunate is that the wrath of God is coming not only to the responsible people, not only to the guilty people, not only to the corrupt people, but even to the innocent, innocent people suffer because of the corrupt who sits in power. Confirmation of what is written in Proverbs 29, verse 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bears rule, the people mourn. My beloved, respected fellow lawmakers, just to remind you the warning of the Lord here. In Proverbs 29, verse 2, or in Proverbs 25, verse 1, the Bible says from the Lord, Remove the wicked away from the king's throne, so that the government will be based on righteousness. Why righteousness is important? God answered, Proverbs 14, 34, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach or disgrace to any people. Now in Proverbs 29, verse 2, let me finish this very important scriptures or reminders of the living God. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked Verse rule, the people mourn. This is in verse 2. Please don't forget verse 1. To all concerned in this nation, verse 1 of Proverbs 29 says, When a man or a woman remains stiff-necked or stubborn after several rebukes, he or she will be destroyed suddenly, suddenly, without remedy." Unquote. This is just a reminder to our beloved countrymen, it's high time for us to make our lives right with God. Because there is also, of course, the so-called Judgment Day. We can see it in the approximately 22 million Filipinos or 21% of our population who live below the poverty threshold or below 10,481 pesos for a family of five as reported by the Philippine Statistics Authority. What must we do for them? The Bible is very explicit, and this command must appeal to us, specifically public servants. Proverbs 3, 27 to 28 says, Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due. When it is in your power to act, do not say to your neighbor, come back tomorrow and I will give it to you when you already have it with you. Unquote. 
There is mourning too in thousands and thousands of people who were orphaned by those who died in the government's war against drugs. It, it, it all started with the command memorandum circular number 1620, six, num, circular number 16, dust 2016, which laid down the guidelines of the PNP's anti-illegal drugs campaign. Campaign plan tagged as Project Double Barrel. It had a two-pronged approach, namely Project Tokhang or the Lower Barrel. It had a and the Project HBT involving massive and reinvigorated illegal drugs operations targeting illegal drugs personalities and drug syndicates. In addition to this two-way approach was the conduct of internal cleansing and education, awareness, and rehabilitation. The project had the following results as recently reported by the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency or PIDEA. Before I go on, I just want to remind everybody I am bringing these issues not to create any controversy, but to remind everybody that the Bible is not irrelevant. The Bible is so relevant in the daily living of every human being, especially in the existence of every government in every nation of the world. According to the uh, reports of PIDEA, 151,601 anti-illegal drug operations conducted. 419 drug dens and 14 Shabu laboratories dismantled. 40.39 billion pesos worth of illegal drugs seized. 220,728 persons involved in illegal drugs arrested, of which 8,185 were high-value targets. 485,295 surrenders completed recovery programs. These are but a few of the many outstanding figures that this project has recorded in its rooster of achievements. Among these numbers, however, one figure tragically stands out. PIDEA puts them at 5,552, but international human rights organizations' count is much higher. I am pertaining to the number of people who died during the government's campaign against illegal drugs. Thousands of people prematurely snatched from their families, robbing them of their chance at a better or even just a decent life, depriving them even of a chance to repent and turn from their unlawful ways. A few months ago or last year, just a neighbor of mine, the name Abed, who just joined the motorcade campaign of former General De La Rosa, now a Senator De La Rosa. He just joined the campaign in the motorcade. When he came back to his house, a neighbor of ours, that evening, a group of people, and as per report to me, some policemen, entered his house. In front of his mother, he was killed horribly. So I remember what God said, justice and righteousness are the foundations of God's throne. God's throne is the seat of power. The government is an extension of God's throne. Hence, just a reminder to all of us that there are some injustices. Mga kapwa ko kinatawan sa Kongreso, kailangan may gawin po tayo. Huwag natin payagang maging laganap ang patayan sa ating bayan kahit anong pamang dahilan. Remember President Duterte's famous inauguration address in Malacanang on the first day that he assumed his office. And I really salute him for this. He said, and I quote, My adherence to due process and rule of law is non-compromising, unquote. No less than the President of the Philippines released this national presidential policy Unfortunately, they were iskalawags in the police system who violated this presidential pronouncement of our respected president. And therefore, 
I would say that the lawmaking body in this country must really do something rather than let this violation of the presidential pronouncement continue. Remember, life is valuable. The Bible teaches we were created by God according to His image and according to His likeness. Killing life outside the due process of the law is murder. And the Ten Commandments are very clear. One of them, God said, do not murder. And I, re I, I remember Revelation 21 verse 8, murderers, sexually immoral, thieves and liars cannot be accepted in the kingdom of heaven, but they will be thrown into the lake of fire with burning sulfur and coal. It will be my fault and an, a sin of omission if after being a member of this August body, I would be a coward to remind everybody of this important scripture of the Lord. As Jesus said, you may be rich, you may, be, you may prosper your lives here on earth, but Jesus said, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and suffers the loss of his own soul to hell forever? The Bible reveals that a soul driven in hell will remain in hell not only for 100 years, not only for 1,000 years, not only for 1 billion years, million years or trillion years, but throughout eternity. That's why the price of our salvation is too high. The very life of Jesus in His blood shed on the cross of Calvary. God is so good. Whenever a sinner like me, I believe I, I am one of the greatest sinners in this world, for when I was a radical activist atheist, I taught my students in college, don't believe in God. Believe in God is just a product of the fertile imagination of human minds for the, for the psychological satisfaction of the suffering humanity during ancient time. Believe in God is man's invention. What we need is advance, unite the, unite the people and advance the National Democratic Revolution to establish a just and human society. I was very sincere, but sincerely wrong, because there is God. And I praise God because before it's too late, I was arrested by the Lord. And therefore, it is my duty to God and to my fellow members of this August body just to remind us of the importance of the Holy Bible. The importance of the Word of God in building a nation. Okay, that's why I decided to deliver this so-called privileged speech. Before I... Uh, Go to my closing, closing, uh, uh, two more closing pages. I just want, I am just reminded by the famous statement of Edmund Burke, a great politician statesman of his time. He said, For what is necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. And I discovered this is also biblical in James 4 17. If you know the good things to do and you don't, you sin. Anong dapat natin gawin sa sitwasyong tulad nito na nagahari kung minsan ang kasamaan sa ating lipunan? Kawikaan 31, Proverbs 31, verse 8 and verse 9. And I quote, In Tagalog, ipagtanggol mo ang di makalaban, ipaglaban ang kanilang karapatan, Ipahayag mo ng malinaw ang katotohanan at ang katwiran at igawad ang katarungan sa api at mahirap. Unquote. In English, to summarize, speak for those who cannot speak for themselves. That's why I am enjoining my beloved colleagues in this August body, let us all be bold in exposing the truth. For Jesus Christ said, you will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Now, last but not least, how can we use the Bible to establish an ideal nation? We must begin with ourselves, the leaders of this land. My fellow representatives of the Filipino people, our seat is not ours. It is but an extension of God's throne, His seat of power in our land. And according to Psalm 89, verse 14, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of God's throne. 
Therefore, the transformation of this country begins when we ensure that righteousness and justice based on the Word of God are enforced in every corner of our beloved nation. We have witnessed how great kings and kingdoms fell because they did not heed the teachings of God contained in the Bible. Let us not be like them. Let us use the Holy Bible as our guide in our pursuit to build our nation upon a strong, upon, upon strong moral foundation. My dear colleagues in this August Chamber, please, by the way, accept my gift, the Bible as a gesture of faith. To guide us, we have been chosen to lead this nation. You may add to the King James Version Bible, our esteemed minority leader, Benny Abante, gifted us last week as this new Bible is in another English translation version called the New International Version, the Simplified One. Additionally, you can find inside some basic biblical truths, teaching that may help you both in your personal lives and official duties. For the Word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart, unquote, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. To use it, please take note of the verse written on the card that comes with your Bible. And I quote, Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful, unquote. So sambayan ng Pilipino na nanonood through live streaming, ang sabi ng Joshua chapter 8, If you want to prosper and succeed in life, meditate on God's law or God's word daily so that you can observe to do written therein. If you do that, anything you do, you will be prosperous and you will be successful, unquote. Before I conclude, Mr. Speaker, allow me to take this opportunity to thank this body for passing the second reading, a bill filed by this representation, the GMRC Bill, or Good Manners and Right Conduct Bill, as substituted by House Bill 5829, or an act institutionalizing values education in the curriculum by incorporating good manners and right conduct as subject in kindergarten up to grade 3 level. I remember in Japan, just before I close, I discovered in Japan why Japan became a great industrialized country. The first 10 years of the lives of the, of the children, they just, they just inject into the minds and hearts of the young students of Japan values, ethics in works, and morality. They did not teach academic courses, not until they finished the foundation of moral values in their existence. And then after that, they were taught of advanced technologies and academic courses. That's why after the Second World War, Japan was destroyed. But after one decade, Japan rose up and became a great industrialized country. This is just a reminder to all of us the importance of moral uprightness. That's why I thank the Speaker of the House when he designated me through the leadership as one of the so-called uh, Deputy Speakers of the House, especially Deputy Speaker for good governance and moral uprightness. Now, before I close again, I filed this bill in my hopes to provide students with a holistic concept of character development and moral values formation from their tender age, which, by the way, is also a biblical principle as reflected in Proverbs 22, verse 6, train up a child in the way he should go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. Now, um, Beloved, before I close, I remember during President Marcos' regime, he initiated the so-called Moral Rearmament Program, headed by the late Commissioner Victor Nituda. During Ramos' time, he initiated Presidential Proclamation number number 62, otherwise known as Moral Recovery Program led by Senator Shahani. Unfortunately, those noble programs failed to succeed. I pray that the present dispensation 
before the eyes of history in our generation, such crusade for moral regeneration program be successful, just ensuring the foundation of the future greatness of our country and people. Again, thank you very much for your patience. And before the eyes of history and eternity, I believe I have done my part. Whether you agree or not, I thank you for your patience. God bless you more, and God bless the Philippines. Majority Floor Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the gentleman from the Senior Citizen Party List, the Honorable June Datol, for his interpolation. Congressman Datol, you are recognized. Yes, please. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, yeah. sir. Majority Floor Leader, Minority Floor Leader, my colleagues, Deputy Speaker, Brother Eddie, I am representing senior citizen in this August chamber, representing 10 million senior citizens in our country. Ito po ang tanong ko. Ano po ang kahalagahan ng Biblia sa taong bayan at sa aming mga kongresista tong 18 Congress? Mga sabay-sabay na daluyong ang mga sakuna na ating nararanasan. Gaya ng nakakatakot na NCOB virus at ang paglulupage o pagwawala ng bulkang taal. Ito po ba ay sinyales ng pagtatapos na ng daigdig? Ano po ang masasabi ninyo sa bulwagang ito? At sa mga nakikinig ng mga senior citizen ng Bantang Pilipinas na nasa pre-departure area na po ng kanilang buhay. Maraming salamat sa napakagandang katanungan ng isang no-nonsense member of this August body, the President of Senior Citizens Committee, if I'm not mistaken, Congressman June Datul. Ang sagot ko po'y simple lang. Number one, anong kahalaga ng Bible? Dito po sa problema ng ating bansa na dinadalaw ng sangkatutak na calamities, disasters, plagues. Number one po, pag binasa natin ang Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 1 to 14, ang nakalagay doon, blessings through obedience. Ang nakalagay naman ho sa verse 15 up to verse 68, curses through Disobedience. Kaya ho, ang summary ng aking sagot sa verse 1 ng Deuteronomy 28 verse 1, If you fully obey and carefully follow my commands, God said in the word of God, I will exalt you above all nations of the earth. I will command the coming of the blessings to you. Not calamities, not floods, not plagues, but blessings will overtake you. You will no longer borrow, but you will no longer, and you will no longer beg, but you will lend. You will no longer be detailed, but you will be, be the head. Your enemy will come to you one way, but your enemy will run away from you seven ways in great trembling. I suddenly remember when our beloved president said, we cannot fight China, we might be massacred. But if we will apply the principles of God, sa Bible po, yung mga kalaban ng mga anak ng Diyos ay nagpadala ng gabundok na bubuyog. Bubuyog ang ginamit ng Diyos para talunin ang kalaban ng mga anak ng Diyos at minsan nagpaulan ng Diyos ng mga yelo at parang mga bato na dumurog sa kalaban. Ang punto ko po, pag tayo po ay sumunod sa salita ng Diyos, ang langit ay bukas. Kapag ho sinarado natin ang ating isip at puso sa salita ng Diyos, ang impyerno po ang bukas. Kaya yung Deuteronomy 28 verse 15 up to verse 68, makikita nyo rito, itong katakot-takot na sumpa na darating sa mga bansa na hindi sumusunod sa aking mga utos. Naalala ko ako na sa Batangas, nakita ko si Congresswoman 
Deputy Speaker Bilma Santos, when I was in Batangas many years ago, tanghaling tapat, pumutok ang pinatubo eruption. Nasa gitna kami ng highway, alas 12 ng tanghali. Umuulan! Umuulan ng buhangin! Umuulan ng abo! Umuulan ng dust! First, first time in my life, sabi ko, Lord, ano ibig sabihin ito? Imbis na mula ng tubig, umuulan ng dust, umuulan ng buhangin. Pagdating ko sa buka, may binuksan kong Bible. Sabi ko, Holy Spirit, lead me to the right answer to my question. What does it mean? Dinala ko ng Diyos sa Deuteronomy 28, verse 24. Ang isang bansa na nasa ilalim ng sumpa ay mararanasan ng pagulan, ng buhangin, ng dust, ng abo. Kaya the Lord answered my prayer. So I repent, I ask God to, for, to forgive our nation. Let's go back to God. Last but not least, ano ang, ang kahalaga ng Bible sa mga taong nasa departure area? Senior citizens. Ang sabi ng Diyos sa Bible, For God so loved the world, ang, ang sabi po sa Bible, lahat ay makasalanan. Romans 3.23, ang kabayaran ng kasalanan ay kamatayan, hindi lang physical, kundi kamatayan sa impyerno. Subalit, gayon na lamang ang pag-ibig ng Diyos sa sanlibutang makasalanan. Ibinigay niya ang kanyang bugtong na anak upang sino man sa kanya ay sumampalatay, huwag mapahama kundi magkaroon ng buhay na walang hanggan. Listen carefully please, this is my last answer to that important question. 1 John chapter 5, verse 11, verse 12. This is the testimony that God has given you and me eternal life. And this life is in His Son, Jesus. He who has the Son of God has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. I'm sorry to remind everybody, I respect all religions, kaya lahat ng religious leaders ay kaibigan ko. I respect them. But, no religion has power to save. If you study carefully the Bible, ang impyerno ngayon ay puno ng mga taong galing sa lahat ng religion. Religion has no power to save. Kahit sa JIL Church tayo umaten na walang tinatas na religion kundi si Jesus, impyerno pa rin ang bagsak natin. What is important to God is not religion but religion. Hindi religion kundi tamang relasyon sa Diyos ang kailangan natin kung gusto natin magkaroon ng buhay na walang hanggan. Nasa banal na kasulatan po ito, Congressman Jun Datul. Thank you for your important question. Salamat po, uh, Brother Eddie. At ngayon, naliwanagan na natin at makakarating po yan sa 10 milyon na aking mga membro sa buong Pilipinas. Yung inyong napakagandang sinabi at yung Biblia na nandun sa lamesa ko ngayon. Ano po? Paglibot ko sa buong Pilipinas sa 44,000, 42 barangays sasabihin ko na kayo ng mga senior citizen ipinagdadasal tayo ni Brother Rene na humaba pa ang buhay natin. That's all, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Congressman Datul. I am open uh, to other... Majority floor leader. Mr. Speaker, I move to recognize the gentleman from the 1st District of Albay, Honorable Congressman Ed Selagman, for his interpolation. Uh, Congressman Ed Selagman, you are recognized. Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Will the distinguished uh, Deputy Speaker and representative of SIBAC party list yield to some questions? Yes, sir. Dan Botafoco, the president of the Historical Bible Society, underscored five major reasons why we must read the Bible and why the Bible is the most important book on earth. His first reason is that the Bible has transformed the world. I'm certain the distinguished representative will agree to this statement. Kindly provide us in a few words the justification for this statement that the Bible has transformed the world. First, Jesus said in John 6, verse 63, the words that I speak unto you are spirit and they are life. 
Second, Jesus said in Matthew 4.4, 4, repeated in Luke 4.4, 4, men shall not live by bread alone. Third, when we hear the word of God, the word of God is producer of faith. The, uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 17, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Why faith is important? Re Hebrews, 13, Hebrews uh, 11, verse 6, it is impossible to please God without faith. Once we can show to God that we have faith, living faith, He will be pleased. In Numbers 14, verse 8, If God is pleased of your life, He will lead you to that land filled with milk and honey. He will lead you to your promised land. That's why the Word of God is indispensable, as I have been saying. The Bible is indispensable in crafting, in the so-called state crafting or nation building. That's uh, just part of my answer because of the time constraint. Thank you. Thank you, distinguished uh, representative. The Bible is one of the most published and printed books in the history of the world. It has been uh, published and printed in every known language, including Braille. And every year, since it was first written, the Bible is the world's greatest bestseller year after year. You have mentioned that earlier in your uh, uh, privileged speech, Your Honor. Worldwide organizations and associations have been formed because of this book and its message, many of them existing for centuries. Together, they represent multiple hundreds of millions of members. Would that be an accurate statement, uh, distinguished representative? What was your, the last part, sorry, just the last part? Together, they represent multiple hundreds of billions of members, the organizations on the Bible. Actually, I was informed by statistics that uh, out of uh, seven or eight billion people on the surface of the earth, there are around three, three billion, three billion are believers, Bible-believing Christians is scattered all over the world, at least three billion, according to statistics. And I believe in my heart that God is giving every human being a chance, a chance to know Him, a chance to be saved. That's why God said, anyone who is serious in seeking my face, they will surely find me. I have to confess to you, for seven years of my life, I was an atheist. I became a best debater in our university under Dr. Namesha Prudente, proving there is no God using the teachings of Marxism, Leninism, thoughts of Machetung, and dialectical materialism theory. I was very sincere, but sincerely wrong. But before, because there is God. And before it's too late, the Lord allowed me to know Him, or else I might spend my eternity in eternal fire of hell. Thank you. Well, uh, Mr. Uh, Botafoco listed the number two reason, and he said, People are willing to die for the Bible. Can you explain or tell us the verity of this statement? Absolutely. When you read the book, Tortured for Christ, the book of many books, po, hindi ko makalimutan doon sa socialist, communist countries many years ago, Merong special mission lahat ng Bible-carrying people being killed. Isang pastor po ay, ay binugbog at uh, ay yung anak po ng pastor ay binugbog. Ituro mo sa amin kung sino ang nagba-Bible study sa bansang ito. Hindi ho siya sumunod. Hanggang hinuli yung bata sa harap ng amang pastor ay 
dumudugo na ang kanyang nguso, ang kanyang tenga. At sabi ng pastor, tigil nyo na ang pagpapahirap sa aking anak. I will reveal to you the people I know engaging in Bible studies in this country. And the son said, No, 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 Dad. Please, don't be a traitor to God. Please, I prefer to die without being a traitor to our God. Please, don't be a traitor to our God. And many, according to that Tortured for Christ book, many suffered, dedicated their lives because the Word of God is life to many. And this is the reason why this book has been consistently number one bestseller in the entire history of the entire earth because this is precisely a genuine book of the living God, the Word of God. It has been said that wars have been waged War. yeah. or fought over its circulation and interpretation. Governments have toppled on account of the Bible, and kings have been disposed because of it. And uh, this is uh, uh, a historical fact. Would you agree with that statement? Absolutely, I agree. Empirical evidence as well as biblical evidence. I just want to cite two uh, scriptures in some. 75, promotion does not come from the east nor from the west, nor from the south, but from God alone who is the judge. Psalm 75, you can read that. And last but not least, in Daniel chapter 2, verse 20 up to verse 22, might and wisdom come from God. He changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and puts new kings. That's why occupying viable positions in the government is destiny. That's why many are saying that such position is destiny because ultimately God, the creator of heavens and the earth, has the final say in our existence. The third reason advanced is that the Bible is the most accurate book of antiquity. Where this book can be verified by external events such as archaeology, geography, custom, politics, culture, and non world history and writings in other ancient texts, it has been verified as to be accurate in all respects. Could you illustrate further with respect to this statement? First of all, if we study carefully the whole Bible, the Old and the New Testaments, numerous prophecies revealed in the Old Testaments were already accurately fulfilled in the New Testament. Like for instance, the prophecies concerning the birth, the life, and the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, 332 prophecies in the Old Testament were already accurately fulfilled in the New Testament. That's why not to believe the Bible to me is the most dangerous decision that a man can, can do in his earthly existence. Last but not least, evidence. Mr. Gentleman from Albay, whom I have been admiring since I was still a young student leader, Congressman Legman, my life. I used to challenge the military and the police for gun jewel in Camp Olivas. I was imprisoned twice during martial law. I went to the Tinago Island in Bicol, hiding with some activists with me from Manila as well as in Infanta Quezon. I was an object of assassination attempt several times. A grenade explosion, June 17, burst, June 17, 1983. I was an object of one meter away, grenade explosion. It was headlined in Tempo. The Lord is spared my life. Why? 
because I was teaching that night. If you are facing giants, giant enemies, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it unto it and is safe. When I saw the great, I just said, I just uttered, Lord, Jesus. And I was carrying my youngest daughter at the time, uh, uh, Johnny, five-year-old. I covered my body over her, and then in one or two seconds, boom, deafening explosion, destroyed the frontage of the house of my mother-in-law when we were staying. And not even one shrapnel touched our bodies because I was teaching the people the name of the Lord, a strong tower, the righteous run it unto it and is saved. That young, young girl, five years old, my daughter, is now the, pardon me to say, the outstanding mayor of Bukawi, the known Toscoin mayor before mm. of Bukawi, Bulacan. Okay. So that's why if, I, if, if I was, we were killed as a family, there can be no Senator Joel, there can be no Mayor John John, there could be no Mayor Johnny, there could be no JIL ministry probably in this world. Now, this JIL ministry has reached 60 countries of the world for the glory of God and, al and almost all provinces of the Philippines, not, without, not with struggling. I just let the Holy Spirit move and fulfill the Word of God. We never beg for any dollar. We never beg for any, uh, uh, for any pound. We never treat people as BIPs. Because the church entrusted to us by the Lord is just to teach the pure word of God as church of the people, regardless of social status, regardless of economic status. And my life, like the, life of, the lives of many people here, I was, in, I was surprised to see many people here from different provinces or cities. Many of them did not believe in God. Many of them were problem citizens in their communities. Now, the Lord proved to them 2 Corinthians 5.17 is true. Anyone who is in Christ Jesus is a new creation. All things had become, all things had passed away. All things had become new. I can cite Connie Reyes, our great friend in show business. Her testimony is confirming the word of God is true. Gary Valenciano, his testimony confirms that the word of God is true. Our champion, Kamao, Senator Manny Pacquiao, who was submerged in all kinds of vices when he encountered Jesus and became born again to the word of God. He is now an ideal uh, father, ideal uh, husband, and suddenly he became a new creation. No more vice, no more womanizing, no more gambling, no more uh, vices. Because the Word of God is really effective and true. The fourth reason is uh, the Bible contains a life-changing message of freedom. Let me repeat that. The Bible contains a life-changing message of freedom. The Bible has liberated many from oppression by its clear teachings. It raises the dignity and rights of every human being ever born. It is truly an amazing and remarkable piece of writing. It contains clear teaching on the value and worth of every individual. Uh, could you further elucidate on this fourth reason that the Bible contains a life-changing message of freedom? Life-changing, uh, uh, life uh, message of freedom. The Word of God says, once you are in Christ, you are liberated from the bandages of the enemy of God, Satan, in this world. There are many prisoners today in prison. They are inside jail, but they experience 
the spiritual regeneration because of the power of the Word of God. Many of them refuse to leave the prison because they're enjoying their freedom inside by sharing the love of God through the Word of God rather than be, a lot, rather than be outside the prison but still a slave to all kinds of bondages of the devil. Many people have experienced genuine liberty and freedom because of the spiritual food. The Word of God is considered as a spiritual food because human being is a spirit with a body and a soul. The soul, we read books to nourish our mind. We, our soul, our body, we eat good food for our physical health. That's why many people are physically healthy, mentally healthy, but sad to say many people are spiritually malnourished, spiritually bankrupt because of their failure to give quality time in reading and meditating God's Word. Before I, I close my answer to that, I remember the formula for success and, and prosperity, especially for the young people. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. If you want to be successful, real successful, not just in terms of money, but holistic success, maranasan po natin. Meditate on God's Word day and night so that you can observe to do the things written therein. If you do that, anything you do, you will prosper and you will have great success. You will avoid being physically alive, physically healthy, mentally healthy, but spiritually malnourished. The answer is the Word of God. Well, And finally, the fifth reason is that the Bible connects one to history's most important figure, Jesus of Nazareth. The entire Old Testament points to his coming, and the entire New Testament testifies to his teachings and actions. Could you part that explain and expound on this fifth reason distinguished uh, the pretty speaker. May I request uh, Mr. Uh, 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 gentleman from Albay to just to summarize again the question? Well, uh, the fifth reason, fifth reason is that the Bible connects one to history's most important figure. Jesus of Nazareth. The entire Old Testament points to his coming, and the entire New Testament testifies to his teachings and action. Would the distinguished Deputy Speaker further expound on this fifth major reason? Absolutely. You cannot separate the Old Testament from the New Testament or vice versa. The Old Testament is just the foundation of the New Testament. There is an interlinking. We can, we can be reminded by, in the Old Testament, 700 years before the birth of Jesus Christ in a manger in Bethlehem, I, Prophet Isaiah prophesied the virgin will gave birth to a son and his name will be Emmanuel. 700 years. Now in Matthew chapter 1 of New Testament, the birth of Jesus Christ, tatagalogin ko na po, when Joseph discovered that the Blessed Mary was pregnant, akala po niya na sa lisihan siya ng ibang lalaki, he was planning to divorce or to separate and not to accept Blessed Mary as wife. Nakalagay ho sa Matthew chapter 1. But Joseph is a good man, a kind man. He doesn't want Blessed Mary to suffer the sufferings of other women, unmarried women who suddenly became pregnant, pregnant because their culture at the time, once a woman became pregnant, 
without a husband, she will be stoned to death in the plaza. So the angel of the Lord talked to him when he was sleeping. Joseph, hindi ka na na ibang lalaki? Hindi ka na sa na ibang lalaki? At uh, ang, ang batang iyan na sinapupunan ni Blessed Mary ay hindi anak ng sino mang tao. Iniligay yan ng Diyos sa kapangyarihan ng Holy Spirit as the begotten Son of God who, who needs to be a man. Because God is a spirit, He cannot die on the cross for the redemption of human race. The begotten Son of God, Jesus, became flesh so that at the age of 33, He could be crucified on the cross and shed His holy blood without original sin. The only blood in heaven and earth that has the power to remit sin or to wash away the sins of mankind by virtue of His virgin birth. Without the virgin birth of Jesus, mankind has no salvation whatsoever because religion has no power to save. And we can see the different happenings, prophecies in the Old Testament. Historically, we discovered in the New Testament absolutely fulfilled. And more are being fulfilled until the actual second coming of Jesus. So all I can say, the entire Bible, historically, there is a study that all geniuses in science, in politics, in governance, in the different disciplines of human endeavors, they were all founded in the book of life, in the book, in the Holy Bible. That's why many are saying, I cannot live without the spiritual food. That's all I can say at this point of time, sir. Well, uh, uh, since uh, Jesus of Nazareth is the main figure in the Bible, time itself has been divided into two epochs or eras. BC for before Christ, and A.D. Anu Domini for year of our Lord. This is how uh, this Bible has influenced the world. No less than time has been split into two epochs. So, just to recap, Mr. Speaker, distinguished the pure, the pure, uh, Deputy Speaker, let me restate the five reasons why we must read the Bible and why the Bible is the most important book in this world. One, the Bible has transformed the world. Two, people are willing to die for the Bible. Three, it is the most accurate book of antiquity. For the Bible contains a life-changing message of freedom. And finally, five, it connects one to history's most important figure, Jesus Christ. Thank you, distinguished representative of Sibak Partilis for giving me the opportunity to ask these questions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I cannot help, I cannot help but congratulate the gentleman from Albay, considered as a living statesman in our generation, Congressman Lagman, for acknowledging the Word of God in your precious life. I just want to add one thing. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30, this is for the consumption of everybody. God said, those who honor me, those who honor me, I will honor them. I will honor their earthly existence. But those who despise me, they shall be disdained or be less esteemed, unquote. 
I believe in my heart, in the pages of history, not only for being a patriotic lawmaker in our country, but before the eyes of God and before the eyes of eternity, I believe in my heart. You have a good prominence there because God said it. Those who honor me, they shall be highly esteemed. Congratulations po. Maraming salamat. God bless you more. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Mr. Joint Leader. Thank you again. And uh, congratulations for your grand privilege speech on the Bible. Mr. Speaker, welcome for To God be the glory. To God be the glory. I move to extend the privilege hour for another hour, Mr. Speaker. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. Motion is approved and the privilege hour is extended for an hour. Mr. Speaker, Salamat po, Mr. Majority Floor Leader, with the kind uh, approval of the gentleman, the Deputy Speaker, we would like to share with him this glorious moment of truth. Alam kung pagod na pagod na sila, pero masasangayunan po ninyo, ako po ay gusto ko lang lumahok sa katwiran na ibinigay niyo sa hapong ito. Pwede po ba? Kindly repeat. Uh, Pwede po bang makapagtanong sa inyong uh, mga tinuran? With pleasure po. With pleasure. Kung Alam niyo ngayon sa mga sinabi ninyo para bagang may tuturing nating dalisay na hangin na dumaraan sa Kongreso. Sapagkat nagbibigay kayo ng katotohanan. And I'd like to thank you for this book. You're most welcome, sir. This is the genuine book of knowledge, book of wisdom, much more important than the internet. And I wish everyone would read this book together with the rest of the country. Nakikinig ako sa inyo Sinabi ninyo na mga dahilan ng paghihirap ng tao ay marami. May mga ilang mga nagsasabi at ito'y yung mga iba nga ay leader pa ng ating politika na hanggat tayo ay naniniwala sa librong ito ay tayo ay patuloy na maghihirap. Ano po ang reaksyon ninyo? <laughs> Unang-una po, yung pong paniniwala na yan ay baliktad sa katotohanan. Kapag ang aklat, ang salita ng Diyos ay namumuhay sa ating puso at isipan, ang konsyensya po natin ay nasa ilalim ng kapangyarihan ng Diyos na lumikha. Hindi tayo makagagawa ng anumang uri ng injustisya sa ating kapwa. Hindi tayo makagagawa ng mga batas na ang tanging pinaglilingkuran lamang kung minsan ay ang ilang vested interest groups. Sapagkat ang konsyensya po natin kapag napasok ng salita ng Diyos ay pupunuin ng Diyos ng pagmamahal sa Diyos at pagmamahal sa bayan at sa kapwa. Kaya ho baliktad yung paniniwala. Magbalik loob ang tao sa Diyos. Sa magitan po ng salita ng Diyos, Deuteronomy 28, If you fully obey, not just obey, but fully obey, and carefully follow, not just follow, but carefully follow all my commands, I will command the coming of the blessings to you, not lahar, not not uh, earthquakes, not floods, not calamities, not disasters, not poverty, but blessings will overtake you, and you will no longer borrow, but you will lend. You will no longer beg, but you will learn if you fully obey and carefully follow all my commands. That's why in Matthew 6.33 po, ang sabi po roon, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. 
Baka makalimutan ko po, napakaganda nung binanggit ninyo, Congressman Atienza, yung pong uh, sabing pag tayo nagpatuloy sa salita ng Diyos, lalo tayo maghihirap. Deuteronomy 8.18, ang sabi ng Diyos, Do not forget your God. Remember your God who gives you the power to produce wealth or to get wealth. God wants His people to be wealthy. John chapter 10 verse 10, Jesus said, The thief referring to Satan cometh not but to steal the blessings of God, to kill and to destroy. But I came to give life and have it more abundantly. That's why baliktad po yung, yung, yung premise na sinasabi nung nabalitaan po ninyo na kapag nagpatuloy tayo sa salita ng Diyos, lalong maghihirap ang bayan. Kaya naghihirap ang bayan, the prescription of the Creator has been violently violated by the concerned leaders of nations of the world. Once we obey the Creator, heaven will be open and everybody would be prosperous, I believe. Thank you, Paul. Salamat po ron. <clears throat> Ang dagdag pa po nila ay tayong mga Kristiyano ay sadyang pinaghihirap ng ating pananampalataya. Meron po bang basihan yung ganong klaseng uring uh, salita ni naman? Pinaghihirap daw tayo ng ating pananampalataya. Meron po kasing traditional belief na nanggaling sa mga Kastila noong unang panahon. Mapalad ang may hirap sapagkat malapit sila sa Diyos. Wala ko sa Bible yun. Wala ko sa Bible. <laughs> ah, kaya yung iba, yung kayamanan nila, binibigay kuminsan sa relihiyon, nagsasamantala naman yung ibang mga uh, exploiting uh, religious uh, leaders. Meron nung mga ilan-ilan siguro na ganyan no, sa buong mundo. No? Pero yung mga genuine Christian leaders na mayroong banal na takot sa Diyos, nangyari sa kanila ang Proverbs 9.10. Fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Kaya pag mayroon tayong banal na takot sa Diyos, mayroon tayong wisdom. Hindi natin ipapasa dito sa August body na ito ang mga panukalang batas na magpapahirap lang sa bayan. At ang makikinabang lang ay yung mga nagaharing uri kung minsan o yung mga dayuhan dahil meron tayong fear of God because God is a God of justice He's a God of love He's also at the same time God of justice kaya ho baliktad po I have to correct that or else I'll be a traitor to God kaya sinabi ko po dumaraan ang inyong salita para bagang dalisay na hangin sa mga nilalason na ating kapaligiran Ang tao ngayon, kung ano-ano pinaniniwalaan. At hindi bumabasa nitong banal na libro, salita ng Diyos. Nasabi niyo kanina, corruption is the number one problem that makes us all poor. Yung po ba'y uh, gawa ng tao o gawa ni naman? Corruption. Of course, <laughs> ang corruption ho ay gawa ng kasalanan. Ang kasalanan ay hindi nanggagaling sa banal na Diyos. Ito'y nanggagaling sa kaawin ng Diyos na si Satan, the God of this world. Kaya ho, napagandang mabasa sana ng mga lahat ng leaders yung libro na Why Nation Fails. Makikita po natin doon, the failure of many governments in building right institutions that will reinforce the foundation of the prosperity of the people, allowing corruption, allowing abuses in the exercise of political power. Yan ho ay mga contributory factors sa miseries and injustices of the nation. Kaya ho, the Word of God, I believe in my heart, is the major key to prevent violent revolution. Why? Because once the Word of God entered our heart, we will repent of our sins. We will be forgiven. We will have new values. And we will be a good citizen and a good leader of the nation. 
and all the resources gifted by God to every nation can be properly managed to have equitable distribution of wealth. Hence, the entire citizenry will experience prosperity and fulfilling third gen 2. Third gen 2, King James Version says, My beloved, God said, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, be in health, as your soul prospereth. Gusto ng Diyos ang holistic blessing sa lahat ng tao. Hindi lang po iilan. And I believe in my heart, all the members of, the August, of this August body has innate goodness. That's why I got the courage to deliver this privileged speech. Although there is a fear that I might be criticized, I might be ridiculed, but uh, the word beatitude say in the Bible, blessed are those who are being persecuted for my sake and for the sake of righteousness. They are only multiplying your rewards in heaven. That's why I have the courage to reveal the truth. Whether people believe or not, at least when I face my God, I will not be condemned in eternity. Thank you, sir. Mr. Speaker, ako po ay magtatapat sa inyo. Ang aking mga desisyon, ang aking mga dinadalang usapin dito sa Kongreso, ay lahat ay nanggagaling dito. Kapagkat naniniwala po ako, ang Pilipino ay naghihirap galing tayo sa kasaganahan dahil sa kagagawan ng mga namumuno. Corruption starts from the top. Para bagang hindi natin nakikita yun, para bang ayaw natin tanggapin na talagang tayo'y pinagdurusa ng korupsyon. Hanggang ngayon, merong korupsyon sa ating bansa. Kapag ka hindi pinigil, walang pagbabagong mangyayari sa atin. Yung po ba mga nagaharing uri na sinasabi ninyo na siyang may mga kontrata sa ating tubig, sa ating kuryente, na lahat ay galing sa Panginoon Diyos? ay sila nagkakamal ng salapi samantalang pinaghihirap tayo. Kaya suportahan natin si Pangulong Duterte sa isyong yan. I would like to hear more congressmen denounce the oligarchs of today because they are the ones making all of us wallow in poverty. Tama po ba yan? Just a reminder uh, to our uh, respected uh, Independent Minority Leader, <laughs> uh, Congressman Chensa. Ang, ang kasalanan po kasi, greed. Maraming mga oligarchs, mayayaman, mayroong spirit of greed. Pero marami rin yung oligarchs at mayayaman, walang spirit of greed. <laughs> Depende ho sa puso ng tao yan. Maraming may hirap, Walang pera, pero puno ang puso ng greed and covetousness. Merong mga mayayaman, walang hindi makapasok ang covetousness sapagkat ang puso nila ay merong fear of God. Kaya it depends on the condition of the heart. Uh, I just want to emphasize, we cannot make a, uh, what we call this, uh, wholesale, uh, I would say, charges or accusations that all wealthy people or oligarchs are greedy. It depends on the, on the uh, experiential uh, uh, evidence. Because I know there are some rich people, even uh, in the Christian churches, who are super rich, and yet their heart is really helping the poor, uh, paying the right taxes. But uh, you are right. Uh, that, that, that could be some exceptions, as others are saying. But to me, it's simple. The uh, business uh, deals must be properly scrutinized. If there is a violation of the Constitution, there is a violation of our laws, and there is a violation of legal and moral laws, and we can see clearly that uh, only the few, bested few, are being benefited, that is stealing the blessings of, of God and of the nation to the vast majority, the lawmaking body should have the courage to stop it and let justice prevail.
Tama po lahat ng sinabi ninyo at uh, sinasangayon ako. Ang hinihingi ko lang sana ay ang mga naka, nakarinig ng inyong salita na nagmumula sa salita ng Diyos ay magbago ng kanilang pananaw. Alam ko dito sa kapulungan ito, maraming mga alaga ang mga mayayamang bilyonaryo. Hindi kayo yun. Hindi ako yun. Pero marami yan. Kaya pag ang pinag-uusapan ay abuso sa may hirap, ay nawawala ang mga miyembro. Tingin ako sa paligid, nawawala sila. Para bagang itong uh, pin- dinalan yung usapin dito ay hindi, walang halaga. Subalit sa mga nakikinig at naniniwala sa ating pananampalataya at sa salita ng Diyos, napakalaga po nitong paalala ito. Sa gitna ng lahat ng mga isyo, sa lahat ng mga ipinadarama ng ating Panginoon, pumutok ang bulkan, tinamaan tayo ng virus, tinatamaan tayo ng ASF, tuloy-tuloy ang karahasan sa tao, paglapastangan sa buhay ng nilalang. Ito po yung lahat ng ito ay nanggagaling sa kasalanan. Sabi nga po ninyo. And again, I will, I will agree with you. Kaya kayo gusto kong kausap eh, sapagkat lahat ng sinasabi nyo, totoo. Sabi nila eh. Iklian mo ang iyong interpolation. Ay palagay ko, hindi ko magagawa sapagkat paminsan-minsan natin makausap si Brother Eddie. Haba-habaan na natin. Sa dami ng ating dapat pag-usapan. Great pleasure and joy. Sa dami ng dapat pag-usapan sa hapag na ito. Yung pumumutok na isyo ng, mga, ng tubig, yung tubig na iniinom ninyo, galing sa Panginoon Diyos, ang mahal-mahal ng presyo niyan. Sabi nga ni Manny Pacquiao, bakit kailangang may bayad ng tubig ay galing sa Panginoon Diyos yan? Tama. Sa kanya ko narinig yan. I'd like to give credit to a very simple man. A simple man. But God-fearing. Manny Pacquiao. Siya nagsabing, ang tubig sa Pilipinas dapat libre dahil galing sa kalikasan niya. Pero alam ba ninyo ang tubig natin? Isa sa pinakamahal sa Asia. Bakit? ay punong-puno ng katubigan ng ating kapuluan na ibinibigay ng Panginoon. Palagay ko nung tinuran ng ating Panginoon sa Deuteronomy chapter 8. Alam ko kabisado niya. Not on bread does man live alone. At ipinangako ng Panginoon, bibigyan ko kayo ng lupa na punong-puno ng yaman. Gubat na luntian. May mga tubig na dumaraan. Sapa, ilog, May Pilipinas yun ah. Meron kayong tanso sa inyong bato. Meron kayong bakal sa inyong buhangin. Magkakaroon kayo ng lahat ng mineral. May Pilipinas yun ah. Ang pangako ng Diyos, pinigay na sa atin. Di ba? Pero hindi natin nagagamit para sa kapakanan ng mamamayan. Nagagamit ito ng mga mayayamang nagaharing uri. Kanila lahat ng minahan, kanila lahat ng forestry, kanila lahat ang paggamit ng tubig. Nasaan? Si Juan de la Cruz, patuloy sa paghihirap. Kaya ako, again, I will reiterate, I am taking advantage of your message because I agree with it 101%. But corruption is the greatest evil that has hit the Filipino nation. And for as long as we do not do anything about it, lahat itong mga batas natin pinag-uusapan, mawawalan oh, ng saysay yan. Kung patuloy naman ang kabulasugan sa pamamahala ng ating mga may kapangyarihan. So we need to be more vigilant. We need to be more active. We must follow what you are saying today in deed and in our lawmaking. Ako po ay Bago ako mag-decide, ano mang malaking desisyon sa pamilya, politika, sa ating sambayanan, sa kongreso, nagtatanong ako sa librong ito. 
Magdasal kayo ng kaunti, magbukas kayo ng aklat, bibigyan kayo ng direksyon ng Panginoon Diyos. Yan sanang mensahe na makuha natin lahat. Iuwi natin itong librong ito na meron tayong tiwala. Nilikha ang Pilipinas at ang Pilipino hindi upang paghirapin at sabihin ng mundo, kaya kayo naghihirap kasi naniniwala kayo sa Diyos. Tayo raw ay kristyano, kaya tayo ay magiging mahirap magpakailanman. Ang nagsasabi noon, darating ang araw, lahat ng tinuran ninyo na sumpa sa mga ganong uring pag-iisip eh, pag ay mararamdaman nila. Doon lang nila malalaman, katulad ni nung sinasabi noon si Steve Jobs, isang batikan, matalinong tao, nagkamal ng bilyon-bilyon dolyar, nung siya binabawian na ng buhay, sabi niya, wala palang halaga lahat ng ito. Kapag ka ikaw ay nasa huling baitang na ng iyong buhay, matututo kang magdasal. Kaya alam ko, lahat yung mga ma- mangmang at baliktad mag-isip, pagdating ng kanilang oras, hahanap-hanapin ang kabuluhan ng banal na kasulatan sa lita ng Diyos. Walang makakawala dyan. Lahat tayo daraan at dumaraan lang sa mundong ito. Pagdating ng iyong sinasabi nga ni Congressman Datol, ikaw na naroon sa departure area, matututo ka rin magdasal. Huwag mo nang hintayin yun, huwag na natin hintayin yun. Ngayon pa lang, sa paggawa natin ng batas, ito ang ating sandigan. Hindi tayo magkakamali kailanman. Again, let me congratulate you, Brother Eddie. Thank you. Meron lang po ako sanang gustong idagdag bago tayo matapos. Ano? Yun hong uh, akusasyon <coughs> na kaya naghihirap ang sambay ng Pilipino eh dahil sa ating pananampalataya sa Diyos at sa Kanyang salita. <laughs> eh isipin po ninyo, The last commandment, the ten commandments, the ten commandment. Covet not your neighbor's wife as well as your neighbor's possession. Pag tinerate natin yung covetousness sa neighbor's possession, not only neighbor's wife. Possession. Get rich quick. Talaga hong direct rebellion yun. Assault against God. Kaya ho, dapat labanan natin itong proliferation ng sugalan at kasino sa buong Pilipinas. Napakahirap tanggapin sa mga tunay na Pilipino. Pinagbawal sa China ang kasino. Pinagbawal sa China ang gambling industry. Pero, binuksan ng Pilipinas ang gambling industry sa mga Chino. At marami yung report akong tinanggap sa mga beaches, silang nagahari. Ang Pilipino na naging second class citizen. Eh kasi ho, yun hong uh, yung pogo, I'm sorry, eh talaga hong direct assault yun sa Diyos eh. Pero mo yung pera ng kapwa mo, gusto mong makuha? Covet not your neighbor's wife, your neighbor's possessions. This is a gross violation of the command of God. Kaya ho maraming nagpapakamatay sa kasino. Pumunta kayo sa Macau, may chapter ho kami sa 60 countries of the world. Yung mga may kasino, makikita nyo pag uwi ng mga tao, mga natalo, ay daig, daig pang namatayan. At uh, wasak ang buhay. Kaya bilib ako sa isang Taipan. Hindi ko na banggitin ang pangalan. Maari nga basa ninyo few years ago. Merong isang multi-billionaire sa ating bansa. Multi-billionaire. Hindi siya santo. Pero sabi niya, I will never invest in casino because I don't want to be an instrument in destroying the families of our people. I can be rich and be richer without destroying the families. Ganun ho sana ang maging lesson ng mga mayaman. Pwede namang maging mayaman eh. Pero huwag natin payagang masira ang pamilya at ang kultura at ang lahing Pilipino. Kaya ho, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Proverbs 14, verse 34. Kaya mahalaga po ang salita ng Diyos. Yung pong aming niligalo sa inyong Bible, 
Yan hoy out of God's love to everyone. Everyone has a chance to be a citizen of heaven. John chapter 1 verse 12, But as many as received Jesus, not religion, hindi ko pinakikilaman ng religion ng tao, but as many as received Jesus, to them gave He the right to become children of God. Ibig sabihin, immigration paper as citizen of heaven, ibibigay ng Diyos kapag tinanggap natin ang Diyos na nagkatawang tao na matay sa krus ng kalbaryo dahil sa ating kasalanan, na buhay na maguli upang ang sino mang sumampalatay sa kanya ay mabuhay rin maguli at magtamo ng buhay na walang hanggan. Ang huli ko pong gusto sabihin, Congressman Atienza, you know, yun ang central text ng Bible, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, whosoever believeth on Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Sa Tagalog, gayon na lamang ang pagsinta ng Diyos sa sandibutang makasalanan. Inihandog niya ang kanyang kaisa-isang bugtong na anak na si Jesus. Upang sino man ang sumampalataya sa kanya, protestante ka man, katoliko ka man, muslim ka man, komunista ka man, katulad ko dati na hindi naniniwala sa Diyos, sino man ang sumampalataya sa kanya ay huwag mapahamak at magtamo ng buhay na walang hanggan. Yun lang po. Thank you for your patience. To God be the glory and God Again, bless. Again, congratulations, Philippines. Brother Eddie. And I hope to speak more often on this floor so that we may hear from you the words of God. Congratulations. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move to recognize the Honorable Minority Floor Leader Benvenido Abante Jr. of the 6th District of Manila. The gentleman from Manila, the Honorable Benny Abante, is recognized for his interpolation. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would the gentleman from the Sipak Party List, my brother in Christ, allow me to ask some questions? With pleasure. Numpung. Uh, January 16, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor. Ako naman po ay tumayo dito po sa ating plenaryo upang mag-deliver ng privileged speech sa Bible. Ang titulo po ng aking speech ay The Bible, The Ages of Our Nation and People. Ibig sabihin po na ang Biblia ang dapat maging standard ng bansa at ng bayan. Sa lahat ng moral issues and spiritual issues. Talagay ko, Mr. Speaker, the gentleman from Sibak, Party List, Deputy Speaker, would agree with me na ang mga bansang yumaman, ang mga bansang pinagpala, ang pasimula po nito ay sapagkat kanilang recognize ang Biblia sa kanilang bayan. Naalala ko ang Estados Unidos. Nung sila ay nagsimula bilang bansa, na ang unang-unang nagtayo ng bansang yan ay ang mga Puritans at ang mga Bible believers na nanggaling sa Europa. Nagdaong doon sa Massachusetts aboard the Mayflower uh, boat. At doon po, nagkaroon ng isang kauna-unahang thanksgiving sa kanilang pagpunta sa bagong republika. Nagpapasalamat sa Diyos. Gayun din po sa Inglaterra. Gayun din po sa Switzerland. So balit ngayon, Mr. Speaker, your honor, kayo rin po ba ay nag sa akin sapagkat napakalayo na ng Amerika, iniwanan na ang prinsipyo ng Biblia at naging swapang na sa pera, ay nakikita po natin, nakikita po natin ang judgment ng Panginoon sa mga bansa na nung araw, nung araw, itaniyo ang mga bansang yan ayon sa salita ng Diyos. Kayo po ba ay sumasang-ayon sa akin sinabi. Ayon sa history, the founding fathers of United States of America 
were all Bible-believing Christians, including one Catholic who was very passionate in believing God and the Bible. Mm -hmm. That's why the founding fathers of the United States of America were instrumented in making America great in history. But later on, even prayers in schools and universities were banned because of one lady, an atheist, who filed a petition in a liberal dominated Supreme Court of America. And prayers were banned in schools. Then after that, all kinds of violence and killings in schools became rampant. Even the Ten Commandments are prohibited to be displayed on public places. And there were states, Mr. Minority Leader, uh, Congressman uh, Abante, there were states in America, you cannot pray before the food mm. mentioning the name of Jesus. Mm. But I would say at this point of time, despite probably of criticisms to President Trump and, Pres and Vice President Mike Pence, who is a genuine born-again Christian, they are now working to the restoration of prayers in schools, colleges, and universities, and they are fighting the so-called evils of abortion and all kinds of immoral things. I do hope the body of Christ in America will continue to obey God, even against the sentiments of some politicians. Yes, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor. Uh, in fact, uh, to uh, put more evidence in what I said a moment ago, that the very first president of the United States George Washington even said that it is impossible to govern the world without the Bible. And he firmly believed that. In the same token, Mr. Speaker, I made mention in my speech on January 16, and I said, and I quote, and so while every Filipino is guaranteed his freedom of religion, and the free exercise of his religious beliefs and practices. We are one in recognizing God as the supreme authority who directs and governs the destiny of men and nation. Do you agree with that, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor? Well, uh, of course, uh, the Word of God is uh, premium in building and rebuilding the nation. Because God said, apart from me, you can do nothing. St. John chapter 15, verse 5. You cannot do anything apart from the Creator. Because the Creator is the source of wisdom, the source of knowledge, and divine protection. That's why, uh, Mr. Speaker, I absolutely agree with the uh, minority leader uh, Congressman Benny Abante, that all of us, regardless of our religious affiliation, must be united in honoring God by honoring His Word. One of the pointers, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, in my speech last week <clears throat> was that I said that the Bible is God's love letter to man. Let me again echo your statement in your speech today. When you said, the month of February being the month of love, you made mention, and I quote, because I am here to talk about the book of love that was written through, through and by God's own love for us, the Holy Bible. The question is, why do you believe that the Bible is the book of love when the Bible also teaches that God condemns sin and the Bible has pronounced death to every sinner. Mr. Speaker, 
Your Honor. Very, uh, first of all, sin is the reason why people are worthy to be punished because the wages of sin is death. Even though God is a God of love, if the people are living in sins, violating His commands, assaulting His rules and regulations for righteous living, God cannot contradict His word that He can bless the good and at the same time He can bless the sinful ones or the wicked ones. God will be a liar. So God has to fulfill His principle, His prescription. If you seek first the kingdom of God, you will be blessed. If you seek first the kingdom of Satan, you will be punished. That's why there is hell. Hell was originally created by God, not for people, not for men, but for Lucifer and the third fallen, the third, uh, the, the third fallen angels who became demons who are here in this earth to, to steal the blessings of God, to kill and to destroy. This is the modus operandi of Satan's come to steal the blessings of God, to kill, to destroy. John chapter 10, verse 10. But Jesus said, But I came to give life and have it more abundantly. That's why God sacrifices life, the life of His Son. That's why Romans chapter 5, verse 8, God commended or demonstrated His love for you and me that when we, when we were yet sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. So there is no contradiction. God is a God of love. He gave His only begotten Son to die on the cross, not for Himself, but to give redemption, to give, to give uh, uh, salvation to the, to the sinners who will accept the supreme sacrifices of Jesus on the cross. Jesus, who knew no sin, but was made sin for us on the cross of Calvary so that the sinners can be acquitted. Jesus, who knew no sickness, but became so sick, he was afflicted through our transgressions. He was bruised so that by his stripes we are healed. And Jesus, who was so rich, yet became so poor when he became man so that we can be redeemed from the curse of poverty and become rich, 2 Corinthians 8.9. So, uh, I would say that there is no contradiction among the uh, implemented laws of God. The good people, the obedient people will be blessed, but those who rebelled against God will surely be punished. That's why in Deuteronomy chapter 30, make a choice. Make a choice. Do you want life? Life with God? You have to receive life with God. Or do you want curses? You have the right because God respects the free will of every human being. God is not a dictator. He doesn't want a single soul to be perished in hell, Second Peter 3, 9. But he is not a dictator or else Satan can just insult him. That's why he respects the free will of every man. God doesn't want all of us, any one of us to be in hell. But if you want to go to hell, God cannot do anything because he is not a dictator. He has to. It means, to it means Mr. Speaker, our Your Honor, <clears throat> while we believe that from God is perfect righteousness and justice, Mr. Speaker, while we believe <clears throat> that to God belongs perfect righteousness and justice, and that it was God that gave the Ten Commandments to Moses. It was a perfect law. And even at that, Mr. Speaker, that the Lord made a way in His love, in His love, to fulfill that perfect law and to be able to give justice to all, that it was Jesus Christ that died on the cross of Calvary as a manifestation of God's justice and also a manifestation of God's divine love. Do you agree with that, Mr. Speaker? Absolutely. If Jesus Christ did not die on the cross, the cry for justice can never be satisfied 
in the Supreme Court of the universe. Mm -hmm. That's why the sacrifice of Jesus must be acknowledged by humanity. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But the Lord simplified the salvation of humanity. But the religious system made salvation compound and complex. That's, right. That's why God needs preacher of truth and righteousness. Those who are not compromising the truth of God. Yeah, and Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, uh, you made mention in your speech, and I quote, I feel with deep conviction <clears throat> that I am duty-bound both to God and to you, my dear colleagues, to make sure that this celebration will not just simply pass as that. A celebration mandated by a Republic Act. For even though the National Bible Day is but only a day in the Philippines' list of national holidays, the truth it conveys must be trumpeted in all corners of the society every single day that the living God has revealed to the world all the truths necessary to guide us as we endeavor to live our earthly existence. And these truths are contained in God's book, the Holy Bible, which I fully agree and I fully believe. But how is it, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, that as the Philippines is considered the only Christian country in the Far East. Yet it seems that the Bible is not being widely read and even obeyed. A moment ago, while you are being interpolated by a good friend of mine, Congressman Edson Lagman, he made mention that uh, the Bible is a life-changing book. And that is true, Mr. Speaker. And if only all Filipinos will realize that, the Philippines being a Christian country, so to speak, therefore, not only should the Bible be in every Filipino home, but it must be read and obeyed. Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, would you agree with that? There is no room to oppose the perfect will of God. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, just want to, I just want to remind the gentleman from Manila, Congressman Benny Abante, who is the minority leader in this August body. Although the Bible month or the Bible day in our country is only one day, I just want to inform the Filipino people that the Christian community in this country never attempted that the Bible Day be a non-working holiday. It is holiday but working, mm -hmm. not disrupting the economic activities in our country, not creating, not creating uh, uh, economic disruptions that could make an impact in worsening the poverty of our people. And that is because of the integrity of the Word of God in the heart of the Christian community. I just mentioned that because God said, give honor to whom honor is due. Yeah. There are Christian leaders here in our midst who are responsible for such uh, a uh, non-working holiday of Bible Day in the Philippines, aside from Senator Manny Pacquiao, Senator Joel Villanueva. With us is the president of Philippine Council of Evangelical Churches in the Philippines, a highly respected Dr. Uh, Noel Pantoja, and also the national president of the Philippines for Jesus Movement here, Bishop uh, uh, Leo Conga. They never insisted that the, that the uh, day of the Bible in this country be non-working holiday. 
they decided to make it working holiday, just be holiday but working, so that at least our dream for economic improvement, progress that would lead to prosperity of our people be not uh, imperiled. So that's just uh, to, show, uh, to remind the Filipino people because of the power of the Bible for integrity, for justice and truth. We are experiencing living a life with honor and integrity. Of course, we know, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, that the Bible is the number one bestseller in the world. And the Bible is a literary masterpiece. But there are so many people that think that the Bible is just a religious book, Mr. Speaker. What can you say about that? That is another uh, falsity in our society. The Bible is not just a book containing the Word of God. No. The Bible itself is the very Word of God, inspired by the Holy Spirit, written by 40 writers, different times, different places in the span of 1,600 years, and yet you cannot see any major contradiction showing the perfection of the Holy Spirit, the real writer of the Holy Bible. May I belabor uh, your, your statement that you said that uh, uh, the Bible does not have any error in it, of which I fully believe. Because in my speech last week, I spoke on the infallibility of the Bible. I said it is infallible because of its ex inexhaustibleness and freshness. That the Bible is like a spring of water that never runs dry. I said that the Bible wrote the histories and biographies of men and wrote them with the unmistakable honesty of the writers. The Bible speaks of fulfilled prophecies. So therefore, Mr. Speaker and Honor, believing that there exists no error nor contradiction in the Word of God. May I also mention that I have been teaching hermeneutics and problem texts for about 45 years now, Mr. Speaker. Ah. Therefore, we can, we can, every Filipino can have full confidence on the divine authority of the Bible, Mr. Speaker. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. There is no any reason to, uh, I would say, uh, to malign the Word of God. Although there could be some alleged contradiction, if we carefully study the basis of contradiction, it is merely the utter absence of understanding the contextualized interpretation. Because some religious people are interpreting the Bible without understanding the context, mm -hmm. uh, the contextualized uh, revelation. It, it, but if we properly and carefully study the Bible, no any real contradiction, yeah. showing that the Bible is really the Word of God. It is because, Mr. Speaker, your honor that the Apostle Paul said that the Bible can only be spiritually discerned, not intellectually discerned, Mr. Speaker, your honor. Now, you made mention, also in your speech, of the reeling of the effects of local and international conflicts earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, other calamities, novel coronavirus now in many countries in the world. Do you believe, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, 
that what is happening in the world today are signs that the coming of Jesus Christ is near, as recorded in Matthew 24 and Luke chapter 21. Mr. Speaker, Your Honor. You know, Mr. Speaker, I have been uh, reminding uh, people not to be afraid of the prediction of uh, authorities that there would be the great one, the great, the great one, the big one. The big one may happen in our country that even buildings could be swallowed by a big earthquake mm -hmm. because of the earthquake fault is scattered in our country. I pacified them. I told them this. That could be true, scientifically proven by scientists. But don't forget the Bible. Don't forget Job 26 verse 7. God said, I hung it, the earth upon nothing. The planet earth is revolving around the sun together with other planets in Milky Way galaxy without bumping each other because of the awesome power of God. And therefore, it is in the hands of God if He would allow the big one. But if the people of God are pleasing to God, if the people of God have passionate love for God and full obedience to God, God can easily remedy the fault line of the earth because He hung it there upon nothing. And then those signs, my prayer, Lord, do not allow the big one. If earthquakes are necessary as signs of the second coming, as you said in Matthew 24, when the disciples asked Jesus, what are the signs of the second coming? And Jesus Christ enumerated the signs of the second coming, a famine, uh, uh, earthquakes, uh, uh, calamities, uh, wars, rumors of wars, etc., etc. Lord, I am appealing to you. If, you. if there is a need for you to allow earthquakes, just to warn the people, just to wake up the people to repent and go back to you. Do it mildly, mildly only. <laughs> Not the big one. Because my pastor, one of my pastors saw through a spiritual vision while driving his car along Edsa, the Lord allowed him to see through his spiritual eyes that tall buildings were collapsing. And I told him, Pastor, the Lord allowed you to see that to warn the body of Christ. To really be serious in prayer. We have to be serious in prayer or else the Lord may allow the big one. And thousands, if not millions, would die. So we have to approach God and, and, and be serious in fulfilling Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. And I quote, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive your sins and I will heal your land. Before I close my answer, uh, Mr. Speaker, to our uh, distinguished gentleman from Manila, uh, Minority Leader Benny Abante, God is not against prosperity. Some people cannot accept God and the Bible because they love money more than God. God can prosper you without mortgaging your soul to hell. If you study carefully the Bible, God wants His people to prosper. That's why the Bible has so many scriptures. The wealth of the wicked is being prepared for the righteous, Proverbs 13, verse 22. But in Proverbs 10, verse 22, if God blesses you, you will be wealthy. And there is no trouble, there is no pain. Because your wealth is due to legitimate enterprises. But when your wealth is not legitimate but ill-gotten, it will be full of pain and troubles. And you might even find yourself in prison. In, in the, the Bible is very clear. In the same manner, Mr. Speaker, Honor, someone, one of our congressmen said, approached me and said uh, that money is the root of all evil. I said, no, there's nothing wrong with money. There's something wrong when you love money. There's nothing wrong with having things of the world. There's something wrong when you love the world, Mr. Speaker, Honor. But I remember the experience 
of uh, Elijah when uh, they had that great revival in Mount Carmel. The Lord gave the thunder and the Bible says God is not in a thunder. The Lord produced a lightning but God is not in the lightning. But then a still small voice. Maybe there's bigger honor. Earthquakes can come, calamities can come, all the troubles can come, yet it will not convert man because the only way for man to be converted is for him to listen to the Holy Spirit of God and what the Bible says about conversion, Mr. Speaker. Your Honor, am I right? Well, absolutely. Without the convicting power of the Holy Spirit, no person can humble himself because of the inherent sinful nature of man. But when the Holy Spirit used the Word of God, the Word of God is becoming rema, alive in the spirit, in the soul of man, then man can understand the Word of God. Many years ago, I was invited by a scholar, a great intellectual. Everybody knows him, almost everybody. Randy David. Professor Randy David had a television program before Truth Forum. I was invited to be one of the guests, and the other one is a Baptist scholar. I forgot the name, Bishop uh, Dr. Uh, Gabino Tika, yes. And Randy David, Professor Randy David said, Brother Eddie, Dr. Tika, I don't know why I cannot understand the Bible. I've been reading the Bible, but I cannot understand it. And the old man, theologian, Dr. Tika, he was still alive at the time. Yeah. He said, Randy, you can never understand the Bible if you are just using your in mental intellect. You cannot understand it because you do not have the Holy Spirit. Right. He was very prompt. I was really surprised, you know? mm. but no malice. And we really need uh, sincerely to receive Jesus, repent and surrender our life to Jesus, then the Holy Spirit will operate. Then the, that is the only time we can understand the Bible. Thank Mr. you, Speaker, sir. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, you know, for this opportunity. Uh, Dr. Gavino Tika is a very good friend of mine, being a fellow Baptist also. And uh, you're very bold when you said and quoted in Psalm 34, 17, when the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of their troubles. Realizing this verse, Mr. Speaker, there is no question that the answer to all our troubles is to call upon the name of the Lord. Isn't it, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor? Well, God said, call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great mighty things that thou knowest not. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. You do not receive because you do not ask. James chapter 4. But when you ask with faith, with humility and faith in God, and even uh, reminding God of His promises, God cannot say no. Why? Because God cannot be a liar. Ending your speech, Mr. Speaker, Honor, you spoke of the Bible as the book of truth. The book of John tells us that ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. It means, Mr. Speaker, Honor, that there is no law of the land, nor even prison in any part of the world that can provide freedom, but only, only the Word of God that can set men free. First of all, Jesus said in John 14, verse 6, I quoted this one time, 10 days before the election, to then Mayor Duterte, because he said, his, if you do not know the password in heaven, you cannot also enter heaven. And he made a joke. His password is Pastor Kibuloy. And I told him, Mr. Mayor, the Word of God says differently. Stop. 
<laughs> Jesus said, Pastor Kibuloy is one of also my, my friends among yes. all the religious leaders yes. because I don't quarrel with anyone. But that is the truth. And you can ask His Excellency. The Bible says, God said, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to the Father except through me. And I told the, the President, Mr. Pres Mr. Mayor, not yet, he was not yet President. You're a lawyer. You're a prosecutor. You know the difference between A and D. Between A and D. Jesus, Jesus didn't say, I am a way, implying he's only one of the many ways. He used D, definite D. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except, except through me. Mm -hmm. You know, in fairness to then Mayor, now President Duterte, he told me, Brother Eddie, I was only joking. I was only joking. Yes, I know you were joking. But it was shown on the YouTube all over the world. And in fairness to Mayor Duterte, he said he was only joking. And he believed. He believed on Jesus, he said. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, there is hope yes. for our country. Well, Mr. Speaker, Your Honor, uh, in 2007, I also stood in this plenary hall and delivered my speech on the Bible. I was interpolated by about 12 congressmen for three hours. And one of the statements that was said was this. You are trying to make the plenary hall a part of your pulpit. So Mr. Speaker, Honor, are you also trying to make the plenary hall a part of your pulpit? <laughs> that is far-fetched. <laughs> No iota of interest whatsoever for me to make the plenary hall as a pulpit. I feel it is my duty not only to God during the so-called Bible month of the year, and I did not say anything in promoting the Word of God. To me, that is treason in the highest order against my God. Besides, I have a duty to my fellow colleagues here. If some of them... God forbids, may find, may find themselves in the eternal fire in hell someday, they can point their finger to me. You, Brother Eddie, you did not inform me. You did not inform me that there is heaven and hell. And to me also, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> That's why we are doing our duty first to God and our duty to our fellow men, especially to our fellow comrades. To our fellow members Mr. Speaker, of this Speaker, Your Honor, I would like to congratulate uh, the Deputy Speaker, Brother Eddie Villanueva, for a well said, well researched, privileged speech, Mr. Speaker. Now, once again, I have, I have a very good, a very good partner in Congress. Who does not only believe the Bible, but also believe in the personal, experimental relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, as I end my interpolation at this time, let me just quote two verses. It says in Psalms 119, Verse 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And in Psalm 119, verse 11, I will hide his words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for your honor. Mr. Speaker, just to end also my last word uh, with a scripture. This is my prayer that all of us members of this 18th Congress in the lower house, may we, may we find, may we experience the sweetest words from the lips of Jesus on Judgment Day. Matthew 25, verse 20, 
one repeated in Matthew 20, in verse 23, Jesus said, On that day, I will tell my faithful people, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with few things. I will make you in charge with many things. There is promotion after the second coming of Jesus. I will make you in charge of many things. Come now and enter into the presence of your Lord. This is the sweetest words of Jesus Christ from the very mouth of Jesus. Matthew 25, verse 21, repeated in verse 23. Well done, good and faithful servants. Because as servants, of, uh, uh, as public servants, were considered as ministers of God in the government. But there is a warning. If there is a sweetest word from the, from the mouth of Jesus, there is bitterest word. Matthew chapter 7, beginning verse uh, 21 to 23. Jesus said, On that day of judgment, a multitude of people will come to me, paraphrasing many religious people, and they will tell me, Lord, Lord, why did you close the door of heaven to us? We have been calling unto your name. We have been prophesied in your name, made miracles in your name, cast out demons in your name. Why? Why, Lord, did you close the door of heaven to us? And Jesus Christ said, I will tell this multitudes of people on that day, get out of my sight, get out of my sight. I do not know you. Not everybody who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God. Only those who obey the will of my Father in heaven. My question is, how can we obey the will of the Father in heaven if we do not know the will? And how can we know the will if we have no time to read the one and only love letter of God to humanity, the Holy Bible? Hence, the importance of the Bible in nation building. Thank you, my beloved. God bless you more and God bless the Philippines. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker. I move to extend the privilege hour for another hour. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. Motion is approved and the privilege hour is extended. Mr. Speaker, I move to recognize the Honorable Rufus Rodriguez of 2nd District of Cagayan de Oro for his interpolation. The gentleman from Cagayan de Oro, the Honorable Rufus Rodriguez, is recognized for his interpolation. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. To our distinguished Deputy Speaker, Representative of the Sibak party list and the spiritual leader of Jesus is Lord. Would the gentleman accept some interventions from this representation? With pleasure, Mr. Speaker. Firstly, Mr. Speaker, I would like to congratulate the Honorable Deputy Speaker for this privileged speech on the Bible in uh, state crafting and nation building. Certainly very enlightening spiritually, historically, and culturally. We also would like to thank the uh, Deputy Speaker for giving us copies of uh, the Bible that we have now in our tables and which we hope to really read as much as we can. You're most welcome. First of all, uh, you mentioned George Washington, the first President of the United States and Abraham Lincoln, the best president of the United States. Is that correct, uh, Deputy Speaker? Yes, according and to history and the information I received in my personal research, yes, Your Honor. And uh, George Washington said, and can you again quote for us the specific lines of President George Washington and also uh, Abraham Lincoln, because I think it should be repeated, because these are very good words for all of us. George Washington, the first uh, pr president of the United States of America, according to history, once said that it is impossible to govern a nation. And then some are saying the world without God and without the word of God and prayer. And Abraham Lincoln, considered as the greatest president in history of America, the one who authored the emancipation of the slaves, he said, the greatest gift of God to humanity is the Bible. 
Thank you, uh, distinguished uh, deputy leader, deputy uh, speaker. George Washington took an oath when he became president, first president of the United States of America. And the Constitution of the, Repub of the United States of America states that the president shall state the following words, I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and conscientiously fulfill the duties of the presidency, and period. In the Constitution of the United States of America, there is no so help me God. Is that correct, uh, distinguished uh, Deputy Speaker? I have to uh, uh, verify that, uh, that word, that there is no so help me God. What I know is that uh, Thomas Jefferson, one of the founding fathers and the subsequent president of the United States of America, wrote a letter to uh, the assembly of the Baptist Assembly. I think at that time, uh, the Baptist uh, Church is the, one of the biggest Protestant churches in, the, in America at that time, more than 200 years ago. And uh, Thomas, uh, Thomas Jefferson said, I want to assure you, uh, the uh, Christian Assembly of, of the Baptist Church, paraphrasing, that you should not be afraid. In the very Constitution we are crafting, I assure you that there is a protection for freedom of religion and freedom of worship. The state will never interfere in the affairs of the church, in the ecclesiastical affairs of the church. That is the primary reason why there was a separation of church and state. The protection of religious freedom and freedom of worship, not vice versa. But after many, many years, hundreds of years, many people have distorted the real, authentic uh, uh, reason behind the inclusion of separation of church and state. It is not and never designed to suppress the freedom of the people in studying, teaching, and preaching the Word of God in their country. Thank you, distinguished colleague. Indeed, the United States Constitution up to now has no words, so help me God. But then, in the first oath-taking of the first president of the United States at the Federal Law Hall in New York, President George Washington asked for a Bible. There is also no procedure because he was the first president and there was no precedent of having a Bible in oath-taking of the presidency. And he asked for the Bible and uh, St. John Lodge number one of the ancient Masons of New York gave him a Bible. And so therefore, he took the Bible and it was held by the person who was giving his oath, put his left hand in the Bible, and after reciting the statement as provided in the U.S. Constitution, that he will solemnly swear that he will conscientiously and faithfully perform the duties of president, he said, he said, and mind you, George Washington was not a religious person. During church uh, services, he would not even sit at the, uh, at the chairs in the, uh, in the church. He would be always be at the back. But when he took the office of the presidency of the United States, he got a Bible, put his son on the Bible, and after reciting the oath, included these four words that is now being used by all presidents of the United States except four and all presidents of the Republic of the Philippines. And he said, his hand left on the Bible and raising his hand after he made his uh, oath, he said, so help me God. And that just shows, Mr. Speaker, 
that President Washington, as stated by our distinguished colleague, really said that we cannot govern a nation of the world without the Bible. And that is the reason why, since the time of President George Washington, all 45 presidents, Donald Trump is the 45th president of the United States, and all of them will have a Bible and will have to say, so help me God, even if it is not in the Constitution, even if there is some inclination of a separation of church violation, because in this particular case, very clear, the American Constitution, the separation of church and state, but George Washington, a non-religious person, now given the task of leading a new country that was born by revolution, would now invoke the name of Almighty God to help him be able to discharge his duties as the President of the United States of America. And so we see here that from the time of President George Washington up to the 45th President, except for Theodore Roosevelt did not have a Bible. President Pierce, Franklin Pierce and John Quincy Adams did not have a Bible, but books of law. They, they took their oath on books of law. Third, three presidents. And the fourth one is Lyndon Johnson because he took his oath on Air Force One and what was there was the missile, church missile of the Roman Catholic Church and not the Bible. And on that, he took his oath of office as president after the assassination of President uh, uh, Kennedy. And so, Mr. Speaker, all of us, from the time on, then we have the 1935 Constitution. We therefore copy the oath, however, in the Philippine Constitution, now, you see, in spite of separation of church and state, you see in Section 5 of the article of the Chief Executive, there is after the, the oath which says, I will solemnly swear that I will faithfully and conscientiously fulfill my duties as President of the Republic of the Philippines. There, is the, there are the four words, so help me God. And that is why our presidents, up to President Duterte, the 16th president of our country, would always have a Bible and invoke God's help so that, as yes, president, we are able, he is able to lead our country towards development and towards the rule of law. And so therefore, at this point, Mr. Speaker, we can see that uh, the president of the Republic of the Philippines takes his out of office and has a Bible and would say, so help me God. The head of the judiciary, the Supreme Court Chief Justice, would likewise have a Bible and will take his oath and will ask, so help me God. My question, uh, distinguished sponsor, here in Congress, when we take our oath, we always or say, discharge our duties, so help me God. But do we have a Bible with us when we take our oath as representatives of our different districts in when we had our oath taking? Mr. Speaker, that is a very good uh, question. We have none. We took our oath of office with a speaker without the Bible being held by us. If our chief executive would need the help of God, if our judiciary, the head of the judiciary, would need a Bible to be able to take their oath and also invoke, so help me God, the heads, the officers of the legislative branch, the House of Representatives and the Senate do not have the Bible when they say, so help me God. So it lessens really the help of God to all of us because we don't have the Bible. And so would the distinguished speaker be agreeable that henceforth the taking of oath of office 
of members of the House of Representatives and the Senate representing the legislative branch of the government, aside from invoking the help of God, should have, should hold, because you have given us already a Bible. So hold the Bible when they take, when we take our oath of office, so that we will always be under the guidance of the Bible that we have. So with the distinguished deputy speaker, convince also our speaker that in as a procedure, when we take our oath, succeeding uh, congresses, because we've already taken our oath for the 18th Congress, aside from invoking the help of God, that we should hold a Bible. And therefore, on that Bible, we pledge to work, and on that Bible, we work for the best interest of our constituent, our own country. Do you agree with that, distinguished speaker? Mr. Speaker, I sincerely believe that the Holy Spirit has taken over your heart, your soul, your tongue in making this uh, vital information and suggestion. First, I would like to thank you for your uh, inf vital information of history. Uh, part of your being a resourceful uh, lawyer yeah. and uh, at the same time uh, thanking you for that uh, suggestion which obviously has been neglected in some parts of our society or agencies in the government. I just want to remind you as well as everybody that if ever there is a separation of church and state in the Philippine Constitution, the Philippine Constitution clearly says that no religious test is required in the exercise of political and civil rights. Two, the separation of church and state refers to the administration, operation, financial affairs of the state as well as the, the church, no interference whatsoever. But this is the absolute truth. We can never separate God from any state. Because every state is a creation of God. Psalm 24 verse 1 says, The earth belongs to the Lord and the fullness thereof. And therefore, even every government is a creation of God. So we cannot separate God from the state who is the creator of heavens and the earth. Just a reminder to all concerned. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, and in fact, while we have a separation of church and state, there is no separation of state and God. It's two different matters, separation of church and state, but we have no separation between God and, and state. state. So That's therefore, right. I would like to end this interpellation by congratulating our Deputy Speaker uh, for reminding us of the importance of the Bible and that we should always read the Bible and then be able to do what is right and the, because of the Bible and in the, with God always helping us. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me say thank you to everyone, especially to our speaker and to everyone who patiently uh, listened to the presentation of this privileged speech. I am just reminding everybody that God, when God is so pleased of your life, he will lead you to your promised land. Numbers chapter 14, verse 8. Thank you again, and God bless you more. And God bless the Philippines. To God be the glory. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I request that... Ah, oh, sorry. Mr. Speaker, I move that we refer the speech of the Honorable Representative Brother Eddie Villanueva to the Committee on Rules for its appropriate actions. Is there any objection? And, and there it, it interpolated. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. Motion is approved and the speech of the Honorable Deputy Speaker Villanueva and the interpolations are referred to the Committee on Rules for Appropriate Action. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Edgar Erisi of the 2nd District of Caloocan for his privileged speech. The gentleman from Caloocan, the Honorable Edgar Erisi, is recognized for his privileged speech. <laughs>